As I'm sure you uh, know, and there's been a, a postponing and procrastination, but it's about to start, our colleague and comrade, Ezra Levant, uh, is going to be in court this week. And the trial, well, it's over his right to speak his mind about a specific Muslim activist and leader. Look, I'm not going to discuss the details of the case here, but I am going to discuss free speech, because this trial is surely about that. And genuine, authentic free speech is under attack in this country, as it is in so many other places. I'm not worried about a little heckler like that. I'm worried about the calm, six-figure earning a year lawyer who was sitting up here on the Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission, far more than I'm worried about some noisy heckler. Because some noisy heckler, I can say, shoo, 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 shoo. But I can't quite do that for someone who works for the state. Section 30 of the Nova Scotia Act says that anyone who is complained about before the Human Rights Commission has certain risks. One of them is that our friend Christy here can literally enter any premises in the province without a search warrant and take a copy of anything and make any search, oh, by the way, without a warrant. So an accused murderer has more rights in Nova Scotia than an accused publisher. That's a little bit scary to me. Hmm. The war against your, my, our freedom to speak our minds is engaged in various campaigns. The central aim is always the same though, it's always the same. Preventing liberty, restricting the right to criticize, to think outside of the box. The people waging this war are, are also various, but have you noticed that it, it, it's seldom us, you, me, the people we know? It's never us who actually attack. I've never sued anybody. I've never sued anybody. I wouldn't know how to sue someone, frankly. I don't have lawyers. I've been sued, uh, very rarely, and again, it's always the same type of person who does it. Beyond litigation, though, there are the political and personal attacks, the threats to harm, the refusal to employ, the, 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 the firings. Well, who's behind all this? It's sometimes individuals, but often communities, or at least activists in those communities. There are people who assume, who believe viscerally in the gut that their critics have no right to criticise them. I don't mean no right to lie and harass. We don't have that right, and that's as it should be. No, I mean preventing the right to informed, if strong, criticism. Uh, look, it, it's no revelation that the Islamic and gay communities are particularly active in this area at this point in history, using human rights commissions, the courts, the media, to extinguish contrary views. But let's be honest here, come on. Some in the Jewish community also have behaved thus over the years, and some still do. And I would suggest that a, a new generation of Jewish activists, younger people, have seen the error of this, are less socialistic, in their urge to censor people, and they realize that the very monster, that very monster that was created by other people in the Jewish community has now turned on younger Jewish people. Your friends did tell you, they did warn you, didn't they? But to no avail. We've seen how human rights commissions have been used, not as vehicles to oil the wheels of equality, but as kangaroo courts to suppress Canadian freedom. And the courts are similar. You need the money, the time, the contacts to launch a lawsuit. The person sued, they may win, but the cost is colossal and the strain, the tension, the time from work and family is profoundly damaging. Activists, and I mean, they're pretty much always on the left, they seem to have that time, don't they? And the money, whereas the majority, the moral majority, if you like, simply don't. Then there are just the untruths, the, the lies. We haven't heard from Muhammad El Masri for some time, have we? But he was head, he maybe still is, I don't know, of something called the Canadian Islamic Congress, one of the groups that will be mentioned in Ezra's trial this week. He was always on the television a few years ago, preventing an, an avuncular, moderate face and demeanour. Well, it was on my old show before here that he made his now infamous remarks about killing Israelis. It was back in 2004, and I asked him if everyone in Israel, irrespective of gender, over the age of 18, is a valid military target. What did he have to say? Have a look. Saying that it has to be totally innocent, okay? Totally innocent are the children, obviously, yeah. okay? But they are not innocent if they are military in civilian clothes, okay? What and about many, women? The same if they are women in the, in the so army. Anyone over the age of 18 in Israel is a valid target. Any, anybody above 18 is a part of the okay. Israeli so just, uh, so uh, populist to army. Here. Everyone in Israel and anyone and everyone in Israel, irrespective of gender, over the age of 18 is a valid target. Yes. 
I have to say this. I'm even fatter and even balder there than I am now. Anyway, what was not widely reported was that I asked him several times to qualify what he had said. I asked if he wanted to edit his views. I gave him ample opportunity in the commercial break as well to maybe explain. He said repeatedly that he didn't want to. Later, when he got into a lot of trouble internationally over calling for Jews, Christians, Muslims, warriors, pacifists, men, women, gay, straight, black, white, left wing, right wing, to be killed, all of them, only because they were Israeli, he said, oh, that wasn't what he meant. He accused me, or his people accused me, of lying, of making things up, of provoking him, and so on. And, and of course, what a surprise, after this, I got a lot of threats and abuse. Free speech. We are hanging on to it by a thread. Please, be warned. By the way, I mean, I don't care if you like Ezra Levant or not, like me or not, like Mark Stein, like Brian Lee. It's, it's irrelevant. It really is irrelevant. It's whether you, you like and, and, uh, and enjoy your right to speak out, to, to have your point of view. I, I'm very tired of hearing from people who want to silence those on the right merely because they want to silence people on the right. Everyone, right, left, center, has a basic human right to speak their mind. If it's libel, if it's slander, if it's calling for violence, that's already covered by the law. This is something entirely different. Someone who I, I, I'm sure understands that very well indeed is Rob Breckenridge, News Talk 770 in Calgary, wonderful talk show, wonderful talk show host. And by the way, Rob, I've, I've been um, enjoying some of the columns you've been writing lately. Terrific stuff. I appreciate it, Michael. Thanks for having me. No, it's a pleasure. I mean, you, you, for example, you wrote one piece objecting uh, to a, a conservative figure, a conservative Christian figure, who wanted someone banned from this country for what he thought was that man's opinions. I agree with you on that. I, I don't want to ban people if they're, if they're a murderous threat, okay, but otherwise, no, you don't ban people. You may disagree with them, but you don't ban or silence people just because you have a different point of view. Well, yeah, I feel very strongly about that. Now, that, that same individual had brought Geet Wilders to, to Canada, and that was something I strongly supported. There yep. were those who wanted to keep Wilders out of Canada. I said, let him in, let him come speak. And the same with this, this controversial academic who's going to be speaking in Toronto this weekend. He seems like a, an odd character, this academic, but he's not a convicted criminal. So let him in and let's hear what he has to say. And if we don't like it, we can respond forcefully. Exactly. Now, the, the pictures we're seeing now are not of that, uh, uh, um, that person in particular, although some would accuse Ezra of all sorts of things. But in this case, I mean, the specifics aren't particularly pertinent. But it's, Ezra Levant is not thought of as a man you listen to because you want very bland, banal opinions you've heard everywhere else. It's a right. conservative, intelligent, uh, thoughtful approach outside of the, of the box, outside of conventional wisdom. He's being sued. And, you know, I, I've only been sued a couple of times, generally when Ezra's on the show, actually. But <laughs> I'm lucky. I work for a big company. I'm supported. But if I was on my own, and in this case, Ezra, I don't think he is supported by anyone, it costs a huge amount of money. You have to take time yeah. off work. Yeah. It's stressful. So the, the, the person who sues you is, is winning whatever the outcome well, that's the thing. Look, and as you said at the outset, I mean, libel and slander, that, that is legitimate. I mean, yeah. look, if someone, uh, you know, was someone published an article and said Rob Breckenridge molests children and he shouldn't be allowed to have a talk show, I mean, that would be very damaging to my reputation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that would be a legitimate case for me to bring forward to, to respond to that. And, and so that, I mean, that's where the line is and we should uphold that. But at the same time, maybe we shouldn't use very tenuous cases of, of slander or libel to, to shut people up. And unfortunately, I think what we see, Michael, is that people abuse this process to, to intimidate people, that you better not say what you're saying because I'm going to tie this up in court. I've got the resources to fight this. You don't. So your best bet is to shut up and to apologize and never say that again. So it, technically, it's not state censorship, but, but at times, Michael, it's, it's pretty much tantamount to it. Mm. Well, it's using the vehicles, I suppose, or the weapons of, of the state to make it very right, difficult it is, yeah. for someone. You know, Ezra has, has written this, that he won a case against a particular Islamic group, but the Islamic mm -hmm. group said, well, we may have lost, but we've made it too expensive to, to, be, to make opinions that are critical of Islam. What we're saying is, it's not worth your while. Look, I, I'll be absolutely candid here. I'm, I'm not going to name people, but there are major media organizations that have paid off people rather than go to court. They'll pay yeah. five, ten, fifteen, thirty thousand dollars even because if they go to lawyers, discovery, and court, it can cost them four or five times that amount. They'd rather just get rid of the issue. 
Oh, yeah, and, and I think that happens far more than we realize because, as you say, that kind of a settlement, we'll never hear about it, and, and people would rather just avoid the cost and, and the, the notoriety of, of going to trial. And, you know, the thing is, the, the irony with Ezra's case, and you look at what people say about Ezra Levant, how often he's called a dishonest, how often people call him a liar, how often people call him a racist, it's constant. And, and uh, you know, if Ezra were taking the same approach that his opponent in this case is taking, he'd be suing people constantly. You know, political discourse can be rough and tumble, and I, I think we need to ensure that our libel and our slander laws aren't infringing on that, but unfortunately, it, it seems as, as though it is. Mm. It's also very selective, and these things always are, aren't they? I, I can't think of an example yeah. where they're applied universally. And I hope this doesn't sound tired because it's been made before, but there, when it comes to religion, well, there's one group in particular that seems quite litigious and, and quite well defended, and that's Islam at this point. Uh, you can say pretty much whatever you want about Christians, and you should be able to. And there is no recourse at all, certainly not under law or in a human rights commission. Well, it certainly doesn't seem that way. I, I, I'm struggling to think of an example where that's the case. Now, perhaps we could go back to the example of this, this uh, Christian conservative who wants to keep this uh, academic out, but he's, he's not suing anybody as no. far as I'm aware. And so it does seem to be, at least the cases we see, uh, certainly coming from, from one side and one side only. Yeah, I mean, and Charles McVitie, that's who we're talking about, and Charles has been on the show, but, and he will be in the future, I'm sure. I don't always agree with him, but that's not the point. He has been a, he's been called the most horrible names. I've, I've heard people on radio, for example, calling the most sure. awful things. He doesn't sue people. He just says, wow, and he moves on, and he does what he does. Yeah. Well, and, and that's how it should be. I, I, and I, it's, it's, it's bizarre that we have to point this out. Uh, look, if, if somebody accuses Charles McVitie of something, and it's demonstrably false and demonstrably uh, defamatory to him, then, then he should have a recourse. But again, I mean, we should make sure that the bar for that is set very high. Mm. So if I say, well, Charles McVitie is a, a Christian extremist and he's a windbag and he's an idiot or whatever, you know, as you say, the things that people say about him, that should be part of a, a rough and tumble political discourse yep. that the state really has no business policing. Yes, exactly. And, and uh, for those people who, uh, oh, I hate this phrase, I am offended. Well, that's become a whine. I do not care yeah. if you're offended. It's your problem and not mine. Just grow up and get used to it. Always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael.